Okay, so so what is artificial intelligence? The easiest analogy I can use to explain that to you is if you're in a car and you turn on the heat, it's going to blast heat out and it really doesn't care about what changes within the car. The heat's going to continue to come out of the motor blower. If you have climate control, the car is going to change depending upon the environment. That's AI. The first thing I describe is automation. People tend to confuse them a lot. Let's talk about a couple of types of AI before we talk about what AI is going to bring us and what AI has brought us. So we're all on the same page. The most common AI product that we're using today is our language models like Chat, GPT, um, Copilot, Baird, in China it's Ernie, different types of language modules. Artificial general intelligence is another phase of AI where people Machines tend to be able to do tasks that humans do. Within AI itself, machines are trained to do the task. And they do what's within that task, but not outside of it. Until you talk about the concept of machine learning and deep learning. Or what happens at this point with machine learning is that the machine itself is given a specific type of task to perform and it can multiply that task or it can learn on its own. When you talk about deep learning, you're really talking more or less about neural networks and a neural network is a way the human brain can be represented uh, by a chipset. This is all real world I'm talking about. This is a fantasy. This is going on right now. But the biggest danger that human beings have is something called singularity. And singularity is when you get to the point that that the machine can outthink the human. I mean, like, think about the game of Go. As complex that is, as complex as that is, it has, a game of Go has more moves than there are stars in the universe. And AI machines now are able to destroy human beings when it comes to that game, which is probably the most complex game in the world. So we talked about automation. Um, let's talk briefly about some AI projects. In China, there's something called Sharp Eyes. Sharp Eyes is a facial recognition program which exists in most of China in which they capture images of individuals and they can tell where you're going what you're doing. It's all interwoven into WeChat and other Chinese applications. Whereas the Chinese government has, I've heard, over 200 million cameras and they're just tracking people. That's an AI project. CEOs in America say that 25% of the labor force will be reduced through AI. It's important to note the type of labor that's going to be reduced. There's something that digital, that, I'm sorry, there's something that, that um, Alphabet created called AlphaFold. And AlphaFold, I'm not a biologist, but I can tell you it has, it's related to folding proteins. And from that, mim mimicking that, they're, they're, they're biologists and the chemists are able to make chips and make uh, 
fix things to allow detection of Alzheimer's and maybe even prevention of Alzheimer's and all types of diseases doing what they found. Christie's sold an AI-generated portrait, an AI-generated portrait, for half a million dollars. In agriculture, there's something called precision agriculture with smart irrigation, better use of resources, robotics and, and crop management. Wearables are becoming very, very, very big. Right now, Humane has something called a smart pin, which you can attach and stick your hand out and it shows the image of the pin on your hand. It's like a phone, but without the phone. The headsets, uh, Apple just announced in a VR, a, a, a VR headset. Meta announced the VR headset. Smarter watches, the smart jewelry, smart glasses, smart pillows, and smart lamps. This is all attached to the IoT, the Internet of Things. That's coming. China intends on spending $30 trillion by 2030 on AI. Companies like uh, Ultra Beauty and Sephora have gotten AI to a point that a woman could, through virtual reality, and she could construct different types of makeup to see what she wants to look like. Sony, in conjunction with Honda, has released, a, in a joint project, a car that's supposed to really be amazing. Elon Musk and Sam Altman have set up individual small companies to really look at AI. They, they, they see a tremendous opportunity there. Coca-Cola does all its testing of new flavors to AI. The big thing in education right now is we're moving away from general education. We're moving to stovepipe education. Corsica and you and me are two companies that do that. And between the two of them, they have hundreds of thousands of courses. In other words, when someone graduates now, they will have a certificate, let's say, in blockchain. Or a certificate in... Um, concepts related to proof of work or proof of of, 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 of of stake or some type of C++ certificate instead of having a broad sense of knowledge. University and ed university educations are changing totally. AI will bring us shared power lines, redundant power lines, shared automobiles, shared telecommunications. But the biggest threat is regulation, rogue nations. We have to be aware of that. We're going to talk a moment about BlackRock and, to me, Aladdin, which, to me, is probably the most famous unknown AI machine ever created. It was created by a gentleman named Larry Fink in 1980. And BlackRock, which Larry is the CEO, um, this machine, I would say every financial firm uses this machine to make all types of loan decisions, um, any type of financial decision, they interweave into Aladdin. It touches retail. It does credit score evaluation. It is a massive machine. BlackRock, in the middle of uh, in about, I'd say, 2011, handled $11 trillion in financial elements. Today, that is $21 trillion in financial handling. 
to give you some scope on how much money BlackRock has, who owns and manages the Latin, BlackRock has control over more money than only two countries in the world, the United States and China. It's a huge, huge shadow bank. Google has come up with something called TensorFlow. Again, I'm not a biologist. Uh, I can't really tell you how it works, but I can tell you that it works with deep learning. It works with neural networks. Keep in mind, also a piece of AI is augmented reality. This is the ability to take the real world and the meta world and combine it. It's going to be a great tool for education. I mean, this is a real game changer. When you add the metaverse into it, um, I can think of the impact on commerce, education, training, shopping, sports. We have autonomous vehicles. That's not that far away. Waymo, Cruise, and Tesla have millions of miles under their belts. And in some cities, autonomous taxis are running. Another thing to remember in AI is going to be environmental protection and healthcare. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please give me a subscription. And have a great day and thank you for your time.